This is the Georgia Farm Monitor. Since 1966, your source for state and national agribusiness news and features for farmers and consumers about Georgia's number one industry, agriculture. The Farm Monitor is produced by the state's largest general farm organization, the Georgia Farm Bureau. Now, here are your hosts, Ray D'Alessio and Kenny Burgamy. Ah yes, welcome. Pull up a chair, join me. I could use the company. As you can see, Kenny Burgamy not here this week. He is currently on assignment. Instead, I'm Ray D'Alessio flying solo for the next half hour. Straight ahead on the program, not only is kale popping up everywhere across Georgia, it's also growing in popularity amongst producers. We'll explain why. Also on the show, fire up that skillet. We've got some tips from the Georgia Beef Board that'll turn your ordinary old grilled cheese into a masterpiece. And then later. Hey everybody, Ranger Nick, coming up, we're talking about a unique program here on the campus of the University of Georgia that's keeping this place green and doing a tremendous job of it. All that and more starting right now on the Georgia Farm Monitor. All right, nice job, Ranger Nick. Well, as you already know, Georgia is a very diverse state for agriculture. Not only do we grow many different types of crops, but the terrain is very diverse as well. As corn growers in South Georgia are watching their crop grow on flatland, growers in hilly North Georgia are just now planting. The monitor's Mark Wildman visited one farm that produces award-winning corn right alongside of a river. In Dawson County, Jerry Smith is loading up his corn planter to plant the last of this year's crop. We just uh, had good success at corn and soybeans, and uh, it's done good for us. Uh, of course, I wish the price was up right now. It was real good about a year and a half ago, and uh, but we just uh, take it as it comes and uh, do the best we can and try to make more bushels per acre. He farms with his father-in-law, Ben Overstreet who in 1973 made history on this very field. That was the first time that anybody in Georgia had ever made 200 bushels of corn, non-irrigated, no-till farming. And we got a lot, a lot of publicity about it all over the U.S. Ever since then, this farm has steadily improved their yields and have won many different awards. Last year, I believe, uh, Jerry did uh, just under 260 bushels per acre which was a very, very good year. Um, he, uh, we ended up getting uh, good uh, rainfall conditions, um, good, pretty good weather conditions throughout the season, so it was, a, it was a good year. One of the reasons corn grows well on this land is the fact that it sits right alongside of the Etowah River. This river floods in the winter and brings nutrients to the land. Well, it's probably the best land in Georgia, I'd say, river bottom. And we used to use a lot of chicken litter on it and still do some. It's, been, it's real high productive, well drained soil. The corn grown here will travel just down the road to Hall County, where it will be turned into poultry feed for the huge North Georgia poultry industry. Here at Crystal Farms in Gainesville, Eddie Brock buys corn from many different sources. We make a full line of feeds from uh, poultry feeds, dairy feeds, cattle feed, uh, hog feed. And we serve the North Georgia area. We bring the corn in, we grade it, um, make sure it uh, meets our specifications, and we grind it up to, to, uh, and, and, put it in our, and put it in our feeds. Uh, we have two different size grinds. We have a coarser grind for our poultry feeds, and then we have a fine grind that we put in our pelleted feeds. Georgia Farm Bureau's grain specialist, Taylor Sills, works hard helping farmers find buyers for their crops. We don't just move the corn from North Georgia. We've brought corn from as far away as Claxton and Dublin up here to Crystal Farms, and we'll move it from wherever as long as it helps that farmer help you know, get his bottom line. Um, but we like working with all these feed mills. I, I like driving across Georgia and seeing, uh, seeing elevators uh, that I haven't heard of yet, and uh, it gets me, gets me excited about my job. The Grain Desk is a service of Georgia Farm Bureau to the farmers, and farmers like Jerry Smith feel it is very valuable. They get you the best price uh, that they can get. Uh, they're there when you need them. Uh, you, can, uh, you can just depend on them. And uh, like I say, I've been depending on them for years, and will continue depending on them. In Dawson County, I'm Mark Wildman for the Georgia Farm Monitor. All right, Mark, thank you, sir. In other news now, according to one veggie expert at the University of Georgia, a green superfood is now popping up all across the state. That green superfood? 
kale. Yeah, no longer is it just for a garnish for salad anymore. Tim Kulong, a horticulturist for UGA Extension, says increased consumer demand in connection with its many health benefits has Georgia farmers planting and selling more of the leafy green stuff. Kulong adds consumer demand has increased so large that growers have been asked to grow it, which means they can sell what they're growing. And because of the demand, they can sometimes market it at a higher price point than other greens. Well, meantime, the Georgia Agribusiness Council is pleased to announce that country music sensation Terry Clark will provide the musical entertainment for this year's Harvest Celebration, slated for November 20th at the Comp Galleria Center in Atlanta. Additionally, the evening's activities include a silent auction and a unique Field of Dreams reception that precede dinner. For more information on tickets, just log on to the web address to see there. That is www.ga/agribusiness.org. Well, several years ago, the Monitor profiled Mountain Fresh Creamery, who at the time had just opened its doors for business in North Hall County. Today, Kenny Bergamy reports on their now expanded operations that includes an award-winning dairy. Scott Glover knows it takes a lot of hard work to run the Glowcrest Dairy and Mountain Creamery in North Georgia. Although it takes around-the-clock attention, his dedication and determination seems to be paying off. Uh, our business really started out uh, really good. We, we had a lot of, of good publicity from local newspapers and uh, local radio stations around, and, and we were mainly focusing on, on local, uh, North Georgia, Northeast Georgia. And, um, and as we got started, um, it really took off and, and started growing. Um, we've been in business now for four years and have been fortunate enough to grow about 50% every year. Glover told me the Holstein cows that supply cream line milk are responsible for Georgia's annual Cream of the Crop Award. That's what he and his wife have won as far back as 2004. The Southeast Milk Co-op has also named Glowcrest as top producer of the highest quality milk in the Southeast for the last few years. Typically, uh, milk is pasteurized at 165 to 166 degrees, uh, thus killing everything in the milk. And uh, with that pasteurization, only 145 degrees, uh, we're not killing all the good bacteria and enzymes and stuff that are found in milk. And uh, also we're unique because we, we non-homogenize. Our milk's non-homogenized. And uh, so the fat particle is left in its natural state. And uh, it's, it's uh, more recognizable by the body, uh, can consume the fat particles and get all the nutrients and all there is to uh, offer in milk. The Glover family has turned their state-of-the-art dairy facility into an agribusiness destination, as well as an educational stop targeting kindergartners through seniors in high school. Glover wants to educate children on the importance of including milk as part of their daily nutritional needs. Of course, we, we rely uh, pretty, pretty much solely on um, utilization, class one utilization, which is milk in a, in a jug, and, uh, and those uh, numbers have been declining um, quite rapidly for the last several years and uh, and you know we would you know just a small little, little spot here in North Georgia but we want to try to, to do as much as we can to uh, to turn that trend around uh, we need we need to be creating uh, milk drinkers and um, and with these kids and and being able to to uh, sample some of the whole milk and chocolate milk and and try to uh, let them understand that, that milk is good and uh, and that's that's our main goal and uh, and we want folks to be able to uh, feel good and feel safe about the products that they're, they're purchasing. The fourth generation dairy farmer said he believes he is leaving a special business for his two children. Right, and I, I want to give my kids an opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to experience life on the farm and, um, and have the opportunity one day to, uh, to possibly take over and, and continue in this business. And, uh, and if they don't, that's okay too. But uh, you know, they, they understand and know that uh, you know what, what hard work it takes to uh, to be successful in the dairy business. In Hall County, I'm Kenny Burgaby for the Georgia Farm Monitor. All right, Kenny, great job as always. Well, still to come on the monitor, Ranger Nick shows us how a partnership between UGA and Select Trees of Athens will help continue to make the campus green with envy for many years to come. But first, as we close out Beef Month here in Georgia, the Georgia Beef Board has some cooking tips that'll make your next grilled cheese sandwich one to remember. Stay tuned, you're watching the Georgia Farm Monitor. 
My name is Suzanne Bentley with the Georgia Beef Board and we are here in the Georgia Cattleman's Office in the new culinary kitchen um, and May is beef month so we're right in the middle of beef month celebrating with our 15,000 beef cattle producers um, and we are so excited to, to be in the kitchen today and cook up some beef. We just recently met with Governor Nathan Deal and he signed the proclamation making it official so we are here to celebrate beef month today and we're going to bring to you some easy recipes that you can really take um, using your steak the, the, from the night before. We always try to do things convenient around here when everyone has a busy schedule. So we really want to talk about using your leftover steak um, and, and how to revamp that into something that's kid friendly but can also be a great lunch or dinner for anyone in the family. Um, today we're going to be making the steak grilled cheese. Um, what we did is we just had strip steak last night for supper, use leftovers, make it into a grilled cheese sandwich, and we also used some um, chipotle mayonnaise. We actually don't do that for the kids version, but we do that for the adult version, and you can add anything else there that you would like. Um, peppers, tomatoes, onions, anything that, that you really crave, and you have a lunch made with leftovers from the night before. For more recipes, head over to beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Happy Beef Month, Georgia! All right, thank you, Suzanne. Happy Beef Month to you as well. While agriculture might be the number one industry in the state, most children in Georgia never get a chance to actually visit a farm. It's something the Washington County Farm Bureau is looking to change as they recently hosted their annual Life on the Farm event. Damon Jones was there and tells you why it's so important for the future of agriculture. Each and every year, hundreds of second grade students from Washington County and the surrounding areas have a chance to get out of the classroom and into the field. As this Life on the Farm event put on by the County Farm Bureau helps spread the story of agriculture to the next generation. It's a hands-on experience that not only is good for the children, but for the future of the industry as well. We try to teach them something about farming and about the world around them. We live in a rural area, but the children don't know anything about where their milk comes from. They'll go to a dairy and they'll see a milking parlor, they'll see a milking demonstration, and uh, then they will get a chance to dig their own potato. They will get a chance to see other vegetables growing, and uh, we try to educate the children because if we don't do it, nobody else is going to. The main reason for this event is to educate these children and teachers about their food and where it comes from. While Washington County is very rural, many of these students are still learning something new on this trip. So many times when I go in the classroom and you ask, uh, ask the kids, you know, where does your where does your food come from from home? And they say Walmart or Harvey's or Kroger. Um, they don't understand the whole process, you know, and, and that it actually comes from a farm. Now, unlike the previous 19 years, these kids get to visit actual farms. As Young's Dairy Farm set up a milking station and parlor visit, Hitchcock Farms let the children dig their own potatoes and learn about honeybees, and Veal Farms gave the kids a chance to see farming equipment and learn about wheat. It was a change they thought necessary for the students to get an authentic feel of life on the farm. Um, so we just saw, thought that it was important for them to, to give them that opportunity to, to visit a farm because this may be their only you know, chance that they get, um, and they're going to get to do so many fun activities and see different um, farming um, locations within the county. So we just, we just thought it was neat to actually bring them out and give them that opportunity. It's very important that we get them out there and they see that a farm is really a place instead of something they read about in a book. And uh, they'll get to visit some young farmers that are not much older than they are who are really farmers and really enjoy it. They think a farmer has to be an old man sitting on a John Deere tractor with a straw hat on, but they find out that's not the way it is at all. As for what they hope these kids take away from this unique event? Just the, the understanding of, of what goes into farming and, and what it takes to actually get their food to their plate. Um, Farming is, is a, at a whole new level these days than it used to be. It's not just you take your mule and pile into the field, it's technology and um, there's just so much that goes into it and they just, that they know what all it takes to, for them to eat every day. Reporting from Washington County, I'm Damon Jones for the Georgia Farm Monitor. All right, now just a reminder, if you missed any part of this story or others on today's program, you can still see them in their entirety at our YouTube channel. That is the Georgia Farm Monitor. 
Once there, you can browse the archive of stories dating as far back as 2009. And of course, once you're done watching all those great stories, just keep on clicking like the Georgia Fire Monitor Facebook page we have set up for you. If you have a story idea or if you just want to leave us a comment or suggestion or if you want to pass it along to your friends, have them like it as well. Feel free to send us a message either on Facebook or at the address listed below. That is news at farm-monitor.com. When we come back, Hey everybody, I'm Ranger Nick. Coming up next, I'm going to talk about why I and so many people love the campus of the University of Georgia. It's because of the greenery, and we're going to talk about how that canopy is sustained. We're getting to the root of it, coming up next on the Georgia Farm Monitor. Bozeman, Montana is a prime spot for outdoor recreation and a logical location for a company that caters to anglers. Sims Fishing Products Corporate Headquarters are very proud to be in the center of fly fishing. We have many employees that, that fish, some even fish at lunch. They go right to the Gallatin River, which is about a half mile from here, test out our products. Sims product line includes fishing waders and other gear. What we make here is Gore-Tex fishing waders. Wide range of models and styles for men and women and kids. And we're the last wader company to make waders in the U.S. When designing the new headquarters for these homegrown products, Sims looked to the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Rural Development Agency for help. With USDA support, they were able to equip their factory with energy efficient features. With some of the funding they helped provide, we were able to do solar panels to generate electricity. We have a solar hot water system. We redid all the lighting in the building to do energy efficient lighting. And frankly, on some of these items, we wouldn't have done them without the USDA. The USDA investments are helping to maintain an important employer in this area by keeping their operating costs down. Reducing energy costs definitely helps our bottom line, but we're really focused on helping the environment and you know, fishing you need to be in a great outdoor spot. And if we can help the environment and reduce our carbon footprint, we're very interested in that. USDA Rural Development offers loans, grants, and other programs to help grow jobs and opportunities in America's smaller communities. The USDA office in Bozeman was fantastic, and we're very proud to work with them. We feel like they're a partner. I would encourage anyone interested in an energy project to, to contact them. For the U.S. Department of Agriculture, I'm Pat O'Leary. Well, finally today, in 2008, Select Trees of Athens, Georgia, made a donation of $1 million in sustainable trees to be planted by the University of Georgia over a 10-year period. Now seven years into the project, today Ranger Nick gives us an update on the project and the long-term benefits it's providing. So you heard the number, a million dollar donation from Select Trees. We're seven years into this thing, 750 young trees planted on this campus. I'm joined by Matt Nielsen, Vice President of Select Trees. And Matt, when I say a young tree, I'm looking at one behind me. I don't think of this as being young, but y'all are planting six to eight inch diameter trees. This isn't the little saplings that I was used to in school. Matt, how did all this begin? How did your partnership start with the University of Georgia? Nick, we owe a lot to the University of Georgia in the sense that uh, Dr. Michael Durr has been a researcher here on campus, a, a, a teacher, professor, and he helped really our introductions company get started taught us about what trees we should be growing and helped us introduce new shade trees to the market. So what we're giving back is really just a product of what Dr. Durr helped us develop. Um, so we're grateful to Dr. Durr, grateful to the University of Georgia. And because we saw the need here on campus for big shade trees, um, really saw the opportunity to take advantage of that and send some trees to campus. And have been excited to partner with the University of Georgia to get this fantastic result. It's wonderful. Now let's say I'm visiting campus. I'm a visitor. We get thousands of students visit this place every year. If I want to see one of these superstar oaks that y'all have planted all over this campus, where are some places I could go to see them? Sure, Nick. Well, we're here on North Campus right now and a lot of big trees have been taken out over the past several years and new trees planted. So this is a great place to come and look at some of these newer trees. Also, as you travel down East Campus Road uh, at the vet school, you're able to note some of the trees there planted where there was otherwise nothing. And uh, also over at the intramural fields, you can see some of our trees. Really all of campus is brimming now with big sustainable shade trees um, contributing to 
quality of life and environmental benefits. There's so many good things that is coming from this partnership. And, and why continue to plant young trees? Very simple, trees like people age. And Matt, maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree here, no pun intended, but one of the beautiful parts of this campus are so many of the large, beautiful trees. I'm looking at this one here, an icon on North Campus, but holy cow, Matt, this thing looks like it's got some problems. It looks like it's partially hollow. Talk to me about that and, and how these new trees are helping with this. Sure, Nick. As you walk through campus, you know, you see a lot of big old trees, but one of the things that uh, we've been educated on and, and seen is that a lot of these trees are hollow, they're in decline, and eventually they're going to have to come out. And without a replacement process in place, you know, there's really not going to be a canopy to, to enjoy for future generations. So we're, uh, we're being proactive by planting these new trees and getting them going on campus. It's a wonderful thing and when you think about folks that come here and visit this place and they see the older trees and they see the newer ones, wouldn't it be cool for them to come back and visit when a new tree is there? Great stuff. All right, so Matt, let's get to the, the root, no pun intended, the root of the collaboration between Select Trees and the University of Georgia. 751 trees, seven years that y'all have planted between you and I. How many of them are still alive? Come on. That's a great success story, Nick. To date, there's uh, 749 trees that are not just alive, but they're thriving on UGA's campus and contributing a lot to, uh, to the space. All right, so, so two that didn't make it. It's an incredible success story, as you say. I wonder what y'all are doing. You're holding a little baby tree out here. Tell us, tell everybody at home, how are y'all making this work? Yeah, well, that's a great question. A big part of it is actually the root system of the tree. And we stick this cutting into this uh, soil in a special pot that's designed to help prevent root problems. And so ultimately what we produce is a root system that looks like this. And that root system is what allows for that transplant success onto the University of Georgia's campus. Incredible, and down here on the ground, we've got what looks this curvy thing and a tree. How is this thing helping you to, to grow this tree? This blade actually vibrates through the ground and cuts 100% of the roots on a baby tree. And that helps produce, that cut is actually where the new roots generate from. So we've pre-shocked the tree in order to ensure its success. Incredible, you're cutting the roots, getting it ready to be planted. So Matt, I always wear this shirt, UGA Extension. Do you all use extension at all in your work through the nursery and getting that tree to the University of Georgia? Is extension involved at all? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, soil is critical to the success of trees. And so we do soil samples here, utilize extension for soil sample results, and also on project sites. Once we've shipped trees, continue to uh, monitor the health of the trees. And again, soil is important to that process. And that soil testing is a couple dollars worth of a cost for the homeowner, for the landowner. So many other services that extension does are free of charge. We wish that more people out there utilized extension for the things they're doing. Well, first of all, we got to give a shout out and a big thanks to Select Trees. And Matt, can't thank you enough for hanging out with me today and letting all of us see the process for this collaboration from the nursery to the campus of the University of Georgia. Yeah, Nick, I would be amiss if I didn't mention some key people at the University of Georgia who've made this project a success. Dick Hudson um, has been really key in linking our two groups together. And then uh, several other folks, Dexter Adams and... Um, Brett Gaines now the new uh, head of campus grounds. So we're thrilled to continue this partnership with UGA. It's wonderful. Dr. Hudson's a great friend of mine, and I tell you what, I appreciate you hanging out with me. All y'all at home, thanks so much for spending time with us. Remember, you can check us out on Facebook. Look up Ranger Nick. While you're there, like the Georgia Farm Monitor Facebook page. And as always, enthusiasm's contagious. Matt, we're going to pass it on. Looking forward to seeing all of you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. All right, great job, Nick. Well, that is going to do it for this week's edition of the Georgia Farm Monitor. Just a reminder for all the latest ag info regarding food, great recipes, and of course, what's happening down on the farm. Be sure to check out our Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest page. You'll stay informed and see what's up in the world of farming and the Farm Monitor Show. Take care, everybody. We will see you next week right here on the Georgia Farm Monitor.